Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday before Christmas. Hey, Terry, how you doing today? Hello, hello. Um, I'm just excited, you know. Uh, it's it's going to be a good, you know, in the next couple of days are going to be awesome. Yes. And um, it's so close to Christmas and, you know, a couple of days snuggled in with the honey, you know. Ah, I like that. And hello, everybody here. Let's see. We have Michelle, Philippa, Jackie. Hello, everyone, and happy holidays. Big Mama is in the house. Yep. Thank you all for taking some time out. I know it's a crazy time right now, this time of the year for everybody. If you're baking, you're cooking, you're traveling, you're uh, wrapping, you're decorating, um, any of those things. I'm not doing any of them. <laughs> but, but for those of you that are, I understand it gets a little bit crazy. I don't remember who I was telling the other day, but we have uh, we don't wrap presents anymore. We use bags, and it's so much easier. So I have to sort those out later today. Well, and folks, I just told Susan that uh, forgive me if I'm not typing today. I spilled coffee on my keyboard, which is not good. <laughs> Hey, Margaret and Sue, Lori, Renee, Merry Christmas, everybody. And we're rolling in. All righty. Shall we get to work? Okay. I'll see y'all later. All righty. And you pipe in whenever you have something to say and share Hell Hexy. Tomorrow is the, um, the last Zoom of the year. You can head over to my website and... Uh, Hey, Andrea, she says, I'm lurking while I work. Um, you head over to my website, go to the shop and go down at the bottom on the left. There should be something that says Creative Circle Zoom. And you can sign up there if you're interested or just message me or Terry and, and we can get you the link later on since you can't type right now. Oh, I, I can cut and paste. You can cut. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Okay, yeah, you can yeah. cut and paste. That is awesome. Let yep. me switch my cameras around. Let me go there grab go. that right now. Zoom, zoom. Thank you. And also, if you guys are not on the newsletter, I suggest signing up for the newsletter um, now because there's a lot of stuff coming in the next year. And I have been brainstorming some things and I'm, I'm like super excited. I'm going to scoot this guy over just a little bit. Uh, so this is one of my wildscapes and I'm trying to finish up with the pieces that I have because I have a new way of attacking them going, not a new way, but a, um, an improved version of the way I correct, uh, I work on them uh, going forward. So I kind of want to finish up what I have here. So this is one piece that I had done on a small hoop and now I'm moving it up. And my idea is I, I want to get it on a larger hoop, you know, we'll go to this one and then I'll go up to a larger one. This is a nice size for working on, on, the, uh, on the lives. Hey, Margaret, good morning to you. I only had two cups of coffee today, so I shouldn't be too wired. So I'm, I'm not worried about any hills or anything now, and I'm pretty sure this will be a good color. If it's not, um, oh, well, this is the color I chose, and we will make it work, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm looking forward to the Zoom tomorrow. Looking forward to uh, just doing more of this. I have tomorrow... And then I think I'm done with anything until the, the live the week after Christmas. Okay, already? <laughs> it's already in Susanville. <laughs> Crazy times here. I have such a long uh, piece of yarn, which is fine when I'm working in my chair because I have all that space underneath my chair and I can pull it. Um, I wasn't thinking about that when I cut that, so I'm actually going to make it easier on myself. And I'm going to make this shorter because why make it more difficult? Yes, it means threading the needle more often, but that's okay. All right, let's get both ends. Ah! It's elastic yarn. I do have a whole bunch of yarns I had ordered across the last month. They came in. I should do a little haul video on them. All right, let's do this again. This will be much easier. Yeah, there we go. It's not so crazy. 
you know, and this is French knot. Um, I'm hoping, uh, actually starting in January because of one of the things that I have planned, uh, we should have some more variety other than just French knots, perhaps. Depends on which way I go with it. So I have a question. Who made something as a gift for Christmas for somebody or Hanukkah or whatever other holidays? Because I'm bad. I don't know all the different holidays. Ah, Philippa. Thanks for all the suggestions for a collective noun. And I settled on a cuddle. I saw that on Instagram and I thought that was such a great name. Ooh. You guys know what a collective noun is when you, you have um, like a murder of crows, anything you have that, um, what is it? Uh, I can't think of any of the other gaggle ones. Gaggle of geese. Yeah. Our flock of birds. There we go. Lori made, oh, I'm gonna let, I gotta, I gotta be quiet. I forget I have the wonderful Terry here to read the comments for me. Oh, uh, I'm still looking for the Zoom mic. Oh, <laughs> ah, that's too funny. Oh, that is too funny. Let's see. I bet I'm I, can find, I can find it. You, you go to the comments. I will find the link. How's that? Okay. Here I come, folks. <laughs> I am going to, in the coming year, I am going to have a page that's just going to be Creative Circle on my website, and it'll make it so much easier to find those things. So hang with me for another couple of weeks. All right. And I need to go back over to StreamYard. Six junk journals as gifts. Oh, my wow. God. That's incredible. That is just wonderful. It is. And Sandy made gift boxes for a group of ladies. Nice. Nice. Oh, thank you. No problem. Yeah, and like I said, we'll, in the coming, well, across the next few weeks, that's what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting up a page just for the Creative Circle because of some of the fun stuff that's coming up. And Hexy made a case for an iPad. Uh, material is felt with a bird in the shape of lines of, uh oh, that little heart's right in the way again. Lines of Nas Nazca, Peru. Ah. Interesting. Hey, Barbara. Glad to see you here. Sue took the year off making gifts. I have stitched up some little hearts for friends and neighbors, though. You know, and that's it. A gift doesn't have to be, you know, associated with the holiday. Sometimes some of the best ones um, go off on their, their own thing for no, you know, the, the gifts for no reason. I sent, um, well, last year I gave out a few exclusive, but this year I, and I'm late. <laughs> I just <laughs> mailed out some of my very own cards that I made. And it was so exciting. I just can't wait for people to get them because I've, I've been busy making inventory to sell, but I haven't given any of my, uh, to, to my own friends. And so this is a new feeling for me. It's very exciting. I've loved seeing your cards pop up on Facebook and seeing your greetings. Oh, thanks. It's, it's, it's Get me in the mood. And I keep looking at my, my stack of blank cards. And I, that's one of the things I definitely want to um, put on my list, my to-do list. I want to move it farther up. It's been on my to-do list for a while. I want to move it farther up my to-do list. Yes. Yes. I've got some clothes I've got to make too. I, I want to, uh, I want to create some, some like flowy dresses and things that will be loose and comfortable to wear in the summertime. Yeah. And I, I want clothes that I can, uh, that make me feel good, but I can still sit down and create in the, on with them. I don't have to worry about getting paint on them or, glue nice. or whatever, you know, just things that, you know, some nice hippy dippy clothes. You know? Yes. Because you're a little hippy dippy gal. Yes, I am. <laughs> and proud of it. A card yep. carrying hippy dippy gal. I love it. Now, uh, Philippa says the NASCAR lines are amazing. I don't know what those NASCA lines are. We'll have to check yeah. them out and maybe somebody can post something about them in the group. Hexa, yeah. you have introduced many of us to something brand new. 
I love it when that happens. All right, oh, well, Philippa says hippy dippy is fun. Yes, yes, it is. So much fun. Little bit of flounce, a lot of denim, some flowers, lace. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I have a question. I have another question for you guys. I'm full of questions today, people. <laughs> and hopefully you're full of answers. All right, so I am brainstorming um, color ideas that aren't, you know, without saying yellow, red, orange, green, because they're okay, but they're kind of boring. So I have a list of things that I've started, but I thought maybe you guys could come up with some more. I have uh, earth tones, neutrals colors of the sea, forest, colors of the sky, colors of night. Help me out. What are some more? What are some colored descriptions, some, some phrases or descriptions that might work for, for pinks and purples and vineyard red? tones? I'm sorry? The vineyard tones. Vineyard. Oh, I like that. I got to write that one down. Hey, Phil, uh, I'm sorry, Fiona. Hello. Welcome back to the 1970s. <laughs> Lovely to see you here. Happy holidays to you. Elizabeth, hello. Uh, oh, oh, Philippa says they are shapes of the on the earth, man-made, oh, man-made and can only be seen from the air. Oh, like the big Peruvian hummingbird. Oh, I love that. Oh. And, and, and like crop circle designs and stuff. Probably. Lovely. I think they count. I don't know. Sunrises and sunsets. Okay, I'll let Terry read all of these things. I'm just okay, trying to start so them. So we have birds found, colors found on birds. So we call them avian colors. Um, uh, floral colors, colors of spring, passionate colors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know who put that one in. Oh, yes, that was Sandy. Uh, <laughs> Margaret says, not making any gifts. I have bought two, one secret Santa present and one 21st birthday present. One wow. more to buy for my disabled and physically intellectually sister-in-law uh that's all she needs that's and then we got fiona what has the sunrises and sunsets and uh michelle says smoky blues uh and then uh sandy says waho fiona is here party time <laughs> yes it is oh and philippa um says spider birds etc as far as the lines go and the nazca lines are a group of geoglyphs okay um made in the soil of the nazca desert in southern peru they were created between 500 bc and 500 a.d oh wow wow that is a specific timeline thank you lisbeth thank you very much I've seen them, but I didn't know, I didn't recall what they were called. And says, Fiona says, yay, Sandy, getting ready for your festive cookies if Big Daddy shares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have lots of hellos going on. Oh, you Googled it. I thought you just whipped that out of the backside of your brain there, Elizabeth. How is your new kitten? Well, I guess she's not a kitten. She's two. How's your new kitty doing? Everybody getting settled in and adjusted? I think they're still kittens for a while, just like dogs. Certain yeah. breeds settle down, you know, later than others. Uh, my cat is, I don't, oh, my tie reds. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Let me mark this one. I'm starting I all call, over um, I call purples with, uh, when I do purple with, teal or and kelly and um aqua i call it my mountain colors mountain colors yeah yeah and then i have mardi gras because you know you get that yep. combination okay fiona's got a people a i'm not sure i think there's more to come let's hope either that or i'm not speaking fiona today <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Lisa says she is doing well. Lots of energy. Usually, you. Oh, she usually adopts older cats, so she's she's <laughs> in the learning curve. Oh, people walk the Nazca lines each year. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. And the only reason I went kind of crazy all over here was I was just trying to tack this down a little bit. Yeah, I think these color combinations work well together. Yeah, I really, I, I'm, I really like the hummingbird one. And are those the same things um, because they're they're more simple shapes that people will use those as patterns a lot for stitching and applique and stuff? Or am I, I think just so? I uh, think so. I, I actually got a henna tattoo of one one time. The hummingbird one. Oh, neat. All oh, right. Brenda just popped in and she says that uh, your work looks beautiful. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate that. I am really um, learning so much about the color combinations I like. And I think the lessons I've been learning these last couple of weeks ha have told me, okay, I need to not have quite so many projects in process now that I kind of have an understanding of how I'm going to work on these because uh, I'm running out of certain colors and I want to, uh, you know, I just want to make it easy on myself so that I like, I'm very frustrated having to kind of re redesign the thing that I wanted to make large, but I didn't have enough colors that were going to go with it. So this is the way we learn, right? This is the way we learn. And I also realized that I, I do not like working on the very small hoops. Like a hoop this size is just too tiny for me. You know, I did it on that and it's like, I, I don't enjoy, oh, I must have autofocus still on. Let me go fix that. So I don't give anybody a dizzy feeling. Uh, <laughs> I've already got one. <laughs> uh, well, let's not add to it. Okay. <laughs> let's not add to it. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, poor Terry yeah. with, with all her concussion stuff going on. We're going to have her walking around wrapped in foam, wearing a hockey helmet. Yep. Yep. Just got to stop hitting the noggin. I mean, so like when you hurt something, it's like you, you keep hitting that spot over and over again. Too. Oh my gosh. Yep. All right, what were you going to say? So what? I was going to ask what people are cooking. What's their special dish? This oh, week? what's the special dish? Yeah, either desserts or main courses or I don't know. Like my my mother used to make this uh, this cranberry uh, like side dish and um, she'd take uh, fresh cranberries and put them through the blender and put in orange juice and some orange rind and uh, use raspberry jello. And that was our, our cranberry sauce. Ah, for those of you that like cranberries, I bet that sounds delicious. <laughs> oh no, Fiona, I'm sorry. Should I thought my meds were kicking in? No, I just forgot. We had the <laughs> issues again before I went live. We just got to make some <coughs> I have to learn a new program and I've been putting it off kicking and screaming and I have no choice. I've got to tell myself that I've got to, to figure out how to <clears throat> work with OBS and give up this stinking logic capture that I've been using for years. Yeah, oh, that's a funny one, Fiona. Yeah. <laughs> And I just hate learning something new. I'm so happy when it finally works. Hey, Angie. Happy holidays to you, too. But I just hate taking the time away, um, you know, to, to figure it out. And that's just crazy because, of course, I would save time if I would just take the time and learn it when I first got it. Like my, my microphone, it took me forever to make friends with it. And now it's like, why did I make it such a big deal? Because I love it. Oh I love not having God. the big one on my desk. Margaret Crosby says bourbon candied yams. Wow. Ooh. Now, what part of the world does that recipe come from? Oh, sounds like it might have been one from old days to keep people warm, right? <laughs> I don't know. It, it sounds like, you know, something either from like 
uh, geez, I, I, I don't, I can't imagine. I mean, what countries have bourbon? I mean. Oh, really? See, uh, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I know that it's a, oh, yeah. Brenda says it sounds Southern. Oh. And, and Sandy says Kansas. <laughs> Oh, and then and then Barbara says that her uh, her favorite is her mother's uh, streusel cake, streusel coffee cake. Oh, Ooh, I yum, love yum. a good coffee cake. Mm, I haven't had one of those. Hey, Barbie! Years. Hi, Barbie! Uh, Fiona says that she's never tasted a yam, but she's willing to try. <laughs> um, Would you like your yams hold the your your uh, bourbon flavored yams hold the yams? You know, we could probably arrange that one. <laughs> uh, yams are kind of like sweet potatoes. When I was a kid, my grandmother. Oh, she, Margaret says she made it up. She made it up. Oh, wonderful. Oh. That's fabulous. Such a talent. Cool. Oh, and Sandy says bourbon candied carrots. With with bourbon candied, well, bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie says, yes, please. Bourbon without the yams. And Barbara Clark says, also, bourbon balls are yummy. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend. That was her thing every year. She would make bourbon balls and give them out. Yeah. My mother used to make some, um, uh, some, uh, little spherical um they had rice krispies and uh dates and then they were covered with coconut well, oh, I love those well I, I do the rice krispies you can keep the dates in the coconut i cannot abide coconut oh uh margaret crosby who has our 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 thoughts on bourbon says uh she she lives in south carolina so yeah, that's where bur my my cousin goes to a bourbon place, uh, like uh, museum or a, a, a famous uh, place where they bottle it or something. Down oh, in Kentucky interesting! On vacation, and uh, Gail. Barbie said, "Oh, Gail, Gail! Oh, hello!" And she loves coconut. You can have my portion then, Gail. <laughs> Barbie, now, oh, bourbon balls are like a, a cookie. Are they a soft one? No, they're like a little round ball, uh, like a Mexican wedding cake, only, you know, bourbon balls. <laughs> okay. And Fiona wants to know if she can substitute malt whiskey. Always, right? And Michelle says, sure. <laughs> uh, Barbie says, yuck on coconut, so you're not alone. Um. And Gail says, hello, Fiona, and how are you doing? And I hope that Fiona's doing fantastic. I hope. You know, I we'll wait so. for her opinion, but, you know. Oh, um, Brenda says that bourbon balls are very dense cake. A cake pop. That's a great way to describe it. Yes. Gotcha. Absolutely. Yeah, the little heart was in the way of the word pop. I used to make um, Mexican wedding cakes every every uh, Christmas, but I don't do the baking anymore. And when I was a kid, my favorite thing at the holidays was my grandmother would make, um, we had walnut trees and almond trees. And so she would do roasted almonds just with a little bit of salt and then candied walnuts. And uh, mm. they were fabulous. Um, Margaret says that they have brandy balls in Australia. Ah, I suppose you could probably substitute just about any kind of alcohol, maybe mm. tequila. Oh, see, now you got me thinking about the candy shop in Santa Cruz. He makes tequila balls and brandy balls and, oh, he makes all these wonderful. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Gosh. And, uh, Barbie says, I'll try them over ice. <laughs> <laughs> And Barbara says, no, I'm not sure how you make them, but crushed up walnuts or pecans mixed with bourbon and probably butter and maybe something else that you bake. And then Fiona says, hi, Gail, I'm having a good day. 
must be the promise of chocolate for Christmas. Absolutely. Oh, I'm glad to hear you're doing good, especially today. Have you been able to do any quilting lately, Fiona? Been up to it? And Brenda says, uh, my dad loved them. They're too strong for me. Gail says, my favorite holiday treat are chocolate covered cherries. That my my mother and I always got my brother chocolate covered cherries because he loved them. You know, just hold the cherries, send the chocolate. That's fine. <laughs> my favorite thing at the holidays is my in my childhood was my mother's frozen cranberry mold, whipped cream and nuts. Mm. Interesting. That was from Sue Brown. And uh, let me see. Margaret says, I think they're much the same nuts and other stuff. Uh, Margaret Berry says, uh, dried fruit goes into them as well. Ah. And Barbie's down here. Yum. I want some chocolate for Christmas. No. <laughs> 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 we have the most wonderful little chocolate here downtown he's not cheap but oh man he's good we used to drive over the hill when we lived on the other side every so often just to come get some donnelly's chocolates they were so good well not all chocolate is not created equally no and and people have different you know there's some people that just love the um certain brand like i'm not a dark chocolate fan i want my milk chocolate um but, Sue Brown says that her sister-in-law's favorite candy uh, holiday treat is apples and cutlets. Oh, apples and cutlets. My grandmother used to get those as a gift from uh, somebody. I remember that. They would show up in the little flat box. Yes, apples and cutlets. And Sandy says, I always look forward to the chocolate oranges that you whack on the counter oh, and my eat husband before likes those. the big daddy gets home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brenda says, my mom would make date bars that had crumbly top and bottom. They were so good. And Fiona says, I, I, I will have to be wearing a wooden overcoat. Oh, to not, not quilt. Okay. Starting on a dragon quilt and have been collecting fabric. Bless the internet. <laughs> we have to see pictures of a dragon quilt. Yeah. Even 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 before you start, send pictures of um of the uh, different fabrics that you're gonna use. And yeah, then we can yeah. have our imagination. Yeah. And Gail says, oh, I've never heard of apples and cot applets and cutlets. Um, she has to look them up. There was a mail order place, wasn't there, Sue, that would send those out? I can't remember the name of it. Were they up in Washington or Oregon? Wow. And Renee says, I make chocolates this time of year. Barks, sponge candy, and chocolate covered berries. Oh, sponge candy. What is a sponge candy? Is that like one of those you just put it in your mouth and just kind of like melts in your mouth? Or I don't know, sponge candy. Yeah, I We're must have learn to this give us a thing. Good description on that. Maybe I have, oh, I would go Google it, except <laughs> I got sticky keys. Yeah, and made up in Washington. Applets and cutlets. I, I, gosh, that, that's a memory. And um, Shell says that her mom made date bars with nuts and oatmeal. Love oatmeal. And uh, let me see. And then there's someone made uh, something similar with dates. Uh, I don't know about mail order. We get them in local shops, Sue yeah. says. They are made up. Yeah, okay. In Washington, I believe. Yeah. I can almost see the catalog that would come. They had all this dried fruit. Uh, I, I'm thinking of Harry and David's. Maybe that was it, but I, yeah, maybe it was them. I just remember, you know, I hadn't thought about those in years. It was something that my grandmother really enjoyed. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to, Margaret, you're going to have to elaborate on. Ah, Pavlova. An Australian oh, Susan staple. knows what it is. Yes. Well, we watch, we watch um, Australian MasterChef 
and so they're that's always they always seem to have a pavlo, pavlova in there and what's that i'll let somebody else describe it it's a <coughs> a layered dessert of some kind i'm not the cook so i just re i just recognize the name uh, okay and i probably had a bunch of stuff in it that i wouldn't eat <laughs> date bars are different in kansas how are they different just different because they're in Kansas. Is that the idea? I know how you feel about Kansas. Renee says it's a buffalo thing. The inside looks like a sponge that melts with moisture. Ah. Okay. And Sandy says our date bars have country music. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, Sandy, I should have seen that one coming. We have them covered in nuts. <laughs> Uh, Michelle's popping in saying she loves baklava. Uh, for those that that's, I'm not sure if everybody knows what that is, but uh, that's a Greek uh, pastry uh, with honey and nuts. And oh, uh, Brenda says that the Pelova is, is a, a pretty name for something. It's a and, meringue base with fruit and cream on the top. Thank you, Margaret. You don't like yes. meringue? Oh, love meringue. Mm. Uh, and Fiona says it's uh, the Pavlova is always a favorite at Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Gail says, figures Sandy would say that. Of course, of course. We should have known. Angie says, with all of this talk of goodies, I had to bust out the candy and chocolate nuts we were giving away for Christmas. <laughs> I love it. Oh, no, we were given for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, Pavlova is moraine based with fruits. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you can keep the, cru the fruit. Just give me the meringue. I do like a meringue. And I recently found that cream of tartar is a secret to having fluffy meringue. <laughs> a sponge is made from corn syrup, sugar, water, and gelatin, and baking soda. Interesting. Ah. Interesting. And Brenda says she loves baklava. She used to have a doctor bring in a tray of them into the office. Nice. I'm not picky, Gail. I just don't eat fruit. <laughs> I don't eat fruit. I, I can eat a banana. If I really had to, I can eat a banana if it's super like overripe, but I just don't eat fruit. I don't think there's a fruit I don't like. <laughs> I love fruit. Of course, I, I, I'm, I'm a really bad person for sweets. I love sweets. So well, see, I love sweets too, sweet. but to me, a fruit, it, it, to me, it's about the texture. I mean, you guys know that I've talked about that before. It's, you know, whether it's the texture in my work or the texture that I'm eating. Oh, Susan Brown says that she would live on fruit alone if she could. <laughs> oh, and Michelle says that she would live on watermelon. Watermelon is so good for you. It's got so many. All right. I can't, I can't eat watermelon. Um, yeah. No, I don't like any fruit. It, it all, it's texture. You know, uh, we had apricot trees and peach trees when I was a kid and the texture of those. Um, I like the flavor that fruits bring to cooking. <laughs> but that's it. Sandy says you're awfully fond of some nuts. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> nuts and fruits like them all. <laughs> I love nuts. Oh my yeah, I could. So I could probably live on nuts. That's something I could live on. Yeah. Like this. It's going to be a nice combination here. And Brenda says, Renee, you could probably mix baking soda into jello. And uh, Fiona says, yes, a lot of fruitarians here. Defo fruity people. <laughs> Definitely fruity people, yes. <laughs> yep. 
Um, Margaret says, Australian Christmas is never complete without lots of fruits, berries, cherries, oh, and lychees, especially, especially. Uh, so hot here that the fruit is refreshing and light to eat. Now, lychees are kind of like cherries, right? Um, they're kind of a white version. That's a good question. Yeah. And Sandy says, Fiona, I cover the nuts section. <laughs> yep. Hey, Teresa, welcome. How are you doing today? Hope you're having an awesome Wednesday. Yes. Welcome aboard. We are talking you know all what? things We're hard. Having so much fun. We all forgot to hit the like button. So we've only got three likes going on here. Uh, let's see how fast people. we can get that up to at least 20. I love it. Thank let's you. go. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> Hit that button. Get some action going on here. Ah, uh, well, we have missed having you join us. Thank you, Teresa. Leeches are more like a pear in texture. Yes, they are. Very sweet. Uh, oh, Gail says that she sees 11 likes. Well, Mine's still got three. Maybe, uh, maybe if I refresh my page, maybe it could happen. Oh my goodness, we've got fifteen! Nice, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I also appreciate those of you that go back later and leave a comment after the um, the live is just up there as a standalone video because that does help. I'm. I'm still, as you know, you you guys have heard me say this for the last couple of years, trying to figure out what to do on YouTube videos that aren't live. Not many people watch the studio chat where I was sitting and stitching and talking. So I'm kind of like, uh, whatever. Yes, today this is French knots. I'm just not sure, you know, when I'm doing the same thing all the time, nobody asked me questions. Like if people sent in questions, I would have like a whole Q&A video, but I don't know. Maybe maybe that's all I'm supposed to do is just do lives. Pop, <laughs> pop on more often and just do like a half hour live. I don't know. Okay. Um, Margaret says that lychees are more chewy than, um, than pear. But they kind of have like that pear taste. I will say in my 20s when I was super obsessed with trying to lose weight i would eat fruit but only if it was like in the baby food jars <laughs> it was the only way i could get it down <laughs> i would eat oh my pears. Goodness. i know it was weird hey, i have issues what thing. can i say i'm sorry everybody has their own thing yeah i'm just you know i'm i'm weird in many ways and that was just one of them <laughs> We happen to enjoy your brand of weird. That's why Thank we're you. all gathered here around Thank you. you. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, Roxanne. I'm glad you stopped by to wish Merry Holidays. Happy Holidays to you and yours. Yes. Welcome, Roxanne. We were all uh, going on about our favorite holiday foods, if you want to join in. Okay. Thank you, Gail. I'm not alone. She said, I love baby food apricots. Yep. Because they have no fuzz. Jackie O'Neill says, I used to get notice of your studio chats, but I haven't seen any since you asked if you if if we'd like you to do that. Okay. Well, the video that's up, I guess, last week, or maybe it was the week before. Um, there is one video over there called Studio. And I'm kind of thinking that's what I'm going to do is just have a category. Um yeah, it, tutorials, it's like, I don't know, I, I'm not really into the, you know, what can I teach you right now? Because I'm trying to figure out, you know, my art. And so it's very hard to think about doing a tutorial on what I'm not project based. I'm not, that's not really my focus anymore. So um, I don't know, would people watch a video of just stitching with with soft music in the background? That would be interesting. I should try that. This would be a good time to try it at the holidays since Yes. Uh, there's not a whole lot of other stuff going on. Absolutely. Deviate uh, deviate from the norm for a little bit. See? Yeah, and that's kind of what I did with that last one. I thought, okay, I have to. I have a very nice setup right now on my chair 
where I've got my, my wonderful floor stand and I can put the uh, phone camera on there. I went live on Instagram last week for like, I don't know, 45 minutes. It was great. And so like, I could do those kind of videos all the time on, um, on YouTube, mm. and just, you know, do one, maybe I'll do one that's just music and I'll do one that's kind of, I was thinking about doing like, you know, here's the end of the week. Here's what I've been working on this week. Here's, uh, I, you know, I think too much. We know that, right? I'm an overthinking thinker. <laughs> well, thank you for that suggestion, Teresa. I appreciate hearing that. Given that thought, I can understand why you're not one who uh, spends a lot of time in the kitchen. Because my personal experience is when I get to thinking too much, I'm doing too many things and I burn everything. Yeah. I'm just not, um, I don't enjoy the cooking to me. It's a chore. And we figured out over 20 years ago that for my husband, it's an absolute joy for him. He loves, uh, not just the, the process of cooking, but he loves tracking down interesting ingredients for us to try. I'll try anything, even if it's something that I normally, like I didn't used to eat nearly the vegetables that I do now because of the way he tries. I used to hate mushrooms and now I love mushrooms. Um, so he enjoys, like he just got some uh, macadamia, macadamia nut oil from Australia <laughs> because he just, he couldn't find good stuff here in the States. <laughs> yeah. Barbie says, I'm seeing a therapist right now. His big observation, you think too much. I know. And her comment is, you think? <laughs> I think too much and I don't trust myself enough. Um, I had, I had a meeting yesterday. If you saw my Facebook post, uh, one of my, our made TV meetings and, uh, Dion Woods is our community member. You might know her from the channel, the turquoise Iris or community liaison. So she's like the leader, but she's also a coach and nobody else showed up. It was just me. And we're talking about, you know, projects and plans and stuff. And she holds up this little post-it note and it says, Susan is afraid of success. I'm like, oh Yeah. She definitely caught my number right away. <laughs> I need to get over myself and quit thinking so much. Teresa says tutorials could be centered on, on around a stitch. Start with beginner stitches and work your way up. So many women I know don't have any clue what stitches are or how to make them. I do have, thank you for that. I do have an idea that I am going to start with the basics of, you know, choosing your fabric, um, needles, hoops, all that kind of stuff. And again, that's coming in the new year. So yeah, that makes, makes sense to go along. Hi, Diane is here. Oh my goodness. I love it. Welcome. Welcome. How are you, Diane? You haven't been able to come to a live in ages. I know the stupid time difference. Well, I love how looks here from all over the world. Oh exciting so uh fiona wants to know if barbie's paying that therapist yeah <laughs> for something <laughs> he should have already known about her right well, you know. okay, so, so why are we overthinkers is that because we're perfectionists because we're people, people curious people? curious people have to think about all the different angles it's curiosity Choosing fabric sounds interesting to you, Michelle. That's good to know. Let me see. Uh, thanks, Teresa. And she said you could have a new stitch Sunday or whatever. Spend half an hour. No edits or go over the stitch, for instance, like now you're doing the French knot. You could use this for a tutorial. Thank you. That's a good idea. And uh, Diane says that she's fabulous and hopes. Ooh, I like that. I like fabulous. And Fiona says, I now take my kitchen timer into the sewing room as it was getting expensive replacing burnt pants. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that would have been me. Absolutely. Yep. And Philippa says, Stop distracting me. Just get. Just stitch two pieces together that I shouldn't have. <laughs> oh. 
no, we never do that, right? We never ever do that. Nope, nope. I never, tell you never. what, the one thing I do less of now um, than I used to that I have my floor stands is I I no longer stitch things to my clothes like I used to. So that's good. Or your pillows. Yeah, so the pillows. Yep. I still stitch my hair into things though. That's. And Barbie says, I know, right? My friends tell me that for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, missed you last week, Barbie. We love you, Barbie. Just the way you are. Overthinkers Anonymous. Okay, who cares about Anonymous? Nope. Oh, Diane, you haven't been here since Terry, our wonderful Terry Fitzpatrick. Oh, she reads for me now, so I can supposedly concentrate better, you know, except for when I'm having a wacky doodle day. Yeah. Oh, Teresa, yes. Many tutorials, but I think personality goes a long way. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Michelle says, I'm not an overthinker. I just start a project and see where it takes me. You seem to have a very wonderfully calm personality, Michelle. That's wonderful. I admire that. I've been an overthinker since I was a kid. <laughs> Hi, Hina. Lovely to have you guys wow. here today, too. It's been a while since you popped in on us, I think. Yes, I think so, too. Oh, and Teresa says she stitches her hair into projects, too. It's not as bad now because it's not as long. But when it was long enough for me to sit on, I was forever... Stitching it into things, getting it caught in the doors. Uh, Sandy says this is the best way for her to spend her day on Wednesday afternoons. She she gets into a chat group and makes me feel like I've been partying and we talk <laughs> about booze, but we're not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go back to the rum balls? <laughs> the best way to party, yep. Yeah, I've been trying to think about, you know, a lot of people do like a, a New Year's Eve uh, stream. I've been thinking about what something like that might look like. Maybe just bringing in some friends and uh, stream with them. Oh, Diane says the head should only fleetingly be a part of art. Yeah, they're not thinking too much. And it's not just the art. It's like, you know, thinking about business plans and rather than just diving into something and figuring out the stuff as I go, it's like, you know, quit quit taking so long to get where you want to go. All right, so I have a big old fluffy part there. I'm just going to say that's <clears throat> an opportunity <coughs> opportunity for more texture. We're just going to stitch it all down, the loose edges. So Sandy says, honestly, though, I've laughed so hard. I think I do feel like I have a hangover. <laughs> oh, and uh, Sue Brown says, great thought, uh, Diane. Yeah, don't don't let your head get in the way of creating your art. And then Barbie says, you do an hour, then Sandy does an hour, then you both do an hour together. Woohoo. Angie, are you you're doing regular videos though, right? Not you're you're doing actual um, tutorials, and I love that she does. She's got some great videos over there. If you're into the mixed media stuff, make sure you check out Angie's channel. And I, you know, I was doing that for a while, and I think when I made the transition from so much paper to stitch, I just kind of thought, well, who wants to watch this all the time? But you guys are telling me maybe. And. Maybe uh... Diane says, sip and stitch sounds dangerous. To <laughs> uh, it, there can be some stabbing in there. Yes, you're right. And Sue Brown says, I doubt I'll be able to follow a live stream on New Year's Eve. We have movie marathons during the holiday. Oh, nice. Uh, one of the things I do with my brothers, my brother, when I get together with his family, is we do uh, board games and word games and things like that. Oh, and nice. Oh, my gosh. It, it The laughter is incredible. I just love the laughter that comes out. Uh, Barbara says, Susan, try not to stream on New Year's. There's already a big New Year 
extreme marathoning starting at 5 30 yeah. a.m eastern and going round the clock holy mackerel yeah i know they do something like that every year that's really wonderful <clears throat> I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm pondering all sorts of things. Sip and stitch. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and um, Barbara, you should post the link as it gets closer to that in our Facebook group. Um, because I know there's a lot of people that would probably enjoy that knowing that there's always something that they can pop into. Yeah. Sandy says, Barbie, did you just say that Susan and I should do an hour together? I don't know if the content could pan the, the continent could handle that there. There might be a planet, might shift. Be a planet shift. <laughs> I'm yeah, that might be good. That I'm sorry. Good. I I'm I'm I've been laughing so much my eyes are teary. So <laughs> I'm not having my glasses on and my teary eyes. I'm reading some words a little not bit. a worry. Uh, Wackadoodly. Sip and stitch. Yeah, that could be dangerous. Yeah, my favorite sip these days is called mud water and it's made from mushrooms and chai tea and all kinds of uh, like cacao and cocoa and uh, a little bit of turmeric. Doesn't sound like a party drink though. <laughs> oh, but it, it, it warms you right up. Oh, it makes you feel good. Oh, I love it, Sue. Sue yes. <laughs> Stitch and bitch. Yep. Yep. Well, and, and that's what these can be. I mean, if we have issues, you know, I. <sighs> yep. Barbie says, yeah, Sandy, planet shift from all of us laughing too much. I think exactly. the world could use that right now. Uh, Barbara says, raw drawing and art curious by Miriam are two hosts this year international hosting from spain and israel oh fun uh maridel abrams is the starter at 5 30 a.m eastern on the 31st oh that sounds interesting yeah you guys will have fun you guys will have fun doing something like that i just um i don't know no comment <laughs> Moving right along. Yes, Sandy. I missed the part where she started with mushrooms and I didn't ask her what type. There you go. You're right. Yeah, there actually there's, I mean, some five or seven different kinds of powdered mushroom in there. But the, with all the spices and everything, you don't touch the, uh, you don't taste the mushrooms. Um, you see, Brenda says she loves chai tea. Sandy says, Susan, I think you missed the part where she started with, oh, Okay, I just saw that. Sorry. I'm <laughs> That's late. okay. Gail says, mud water doesn't sound appealing. You should have picked a better name. I didn't name it. <sighs> it's, it's, um, I, I did borrow the recipe or, or a recipe that was, was modeled after their product. But, right. Um, yeah. Um, there's mud water and there's a new product on the market called Rise with a Y instead of an I. Ah. Uh. And, um, yeah, I didn't name it, but at the bottom, you do get a little bit of mud. <laughs> so Fiona says, Ooh, planet shift M might like to be nearer you all location wise. Gotcha. Yep. Maybe I need to get my glasses. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, Elizabeth loves mud water. Diane said, many drink is a party drink once you stick an umbrella in it. True. I only drink water or tea. Yeah, I pretty much a water, tea, and a glass of red wine. And that's that's my limit because otherwise I get a headache. Okay, let's see if the glasses can help. Ooh, tuna for lunch after this. Yeah. On toasted bread with lettuce. And oh, onion. man. Toasted tuna sandwich. That used to be so oh, good. Yeah. Oh, maybe it should call Mississippi tea instead of mud water. Well, that's a good name. That's, that's you, you know, and you could call it whatever you want. Well, you know, it could be that a guy named it. So, well, and they were looking for something catchy for marketing. Yeah. You know, since you buy the, the thing. 
Oh, Barbara, I think it's wonderful. A stream like that is fabulous because there's so many people that are alone through the holidays and stuff, or just, you know, even if they're not alone, they just want to do something like that together. I think the Crafter Streamathon is a fabulous idea, and I hope everybody goes and has that likes that kind of thing and has a good time. And nothing negative to say about that at all, or any of the people that are running it, and hats off to them for the organization of it all. Yes. Because I know whenever, you know, when I used to try and do the, um, uh, the, the hops, the video hops, I, I remember what a, a strain that could be to organize something like that. So I think it's wonderful and I'm glad it's there for the people that want to participate. I was just throwing out ideas as I'm trying to figure, as always trying to figure out my way, um, how to, to do things to connect the community and yet still make it Susan easy. <laughs> I think Susan needs to curl up and, and laugh with the family and, and watch the dogs play. Uh, there will be no watching of the dogs playing because uh, the dog that Zoe loved to play with all the time now has to deal with the fact that there is a young puppy over there that has no manners and... So we'll just have to separate them. Um, oh. Thanksgiving, I sat in another room with Zoe. So I wasn't with everybody. I had a headache on Thanksgiving, so that was fine. I have no idea how it's going to unfold on Christmas, but I am already looking forward to the time that my husband and Zoe and I can come back home and be here by ourselves because it's I think it's going to be a bit of a strain. I see. So, you know, there's... So that's why I'm glad there's things going on for people and I, uh, I'll come home and stitch. We will watch our traditional, um, oh gosh, now I suddenly just had a brain lapse. Um, uh, thank you, hubby's shouting at me from the other room, the hog father, uh, which we watch every year. That's our traditional holiday thing. I've never heard of it. It's, it's a wonky. <laughs> say wonky <laughs> retelling it's, wonder. it's a terry pratchett story so if you if you like terry pratchett books it's a it's uh, a wonderful well uh diane oh. wants to know that if uh, if whether or not margaret um goes to the fairy tale exhibition in g-o-m-a i um, love the photos you shared of yeah. that that was fabulous and Ooh. thank you whoever said i was positive and encouraging i appreciate that that was brenda thank you brenda and uh, michelle says raining susan raining susan it is here yeah so michelle's on the other side of the mountain from me and we had over two inches since midnight um i don't know about you michelle but it's been uh, the the dry creek filled up and then it's been draining we've and been getting flooding again just like in the spring but in different areas um, i'm more worried about the storm that's coming in after christmas because the ground's uh -oh. going to be so saturated then we're going to have like another seven days of it oh no sliding please yeah that's what i'm afraid of and Gail said, I get to meet a new grand dog son. It, um, her son is rescuing a French bulldog. Aww. And Margaret says, no, not yet, Diane. Still hoping to make it while I'm here in Brizzy. It looks great. And Teresa comes in and says, yes, take some time off versus working about what to do. Oh, versus working and I think it should be worrying about what right. to do. Uh, or maybe come on live and just plan to have your fans pop in during the live stream. Time. That would be fun. Yep. Oh, Fiona, are you taking off? It's been lovely to have you here today. I'm just so grateful when you feel good enough to join us. Yes, and thank you for helping to stir up those giggles you enjoy. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And Barbie says, my husband has a whole week off and we don't have to travel. So she's very happy. My husband has three weeks off. I'm so thrilled. Ooh. Three weeks he gets to be home. And yeah, so I'm excited. I mean, you know, he works from home all the time. But the fact that he doesn't have to stress about, about anything with work. Yeah, you actually get his attention. Yeah, well, I always get his attention. You know, you know how much he spoils me. You know that. Yes, I do. But it's different when you can look into each other's eyes. Yeah. 
Uh, I know, right. I know, Sandy, I'm getting too hot over here. <laughs> okay, I think this might be a good place to stop. You can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill this entire one oh. with this color, and then I will be able to take it out and do something like this. I know, isn't that great, Barbie? Yes. Thank you all for being here. I hope you all, if you're celebrating um, the holidays, I hope you have a wonderful time. If you are not celebrating the holidays, I still hope you have a wonderful time. Just getting up in the morning, doing something that you love to do with the people that you enjoy having around. Eat great yes. food, go make your art, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye for now. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.